welcome to this Photoshop training tutorial. In this particular session we're going to look at the use of the magic wand tool for making selections and then the quick mask facility for enhancing that selection. Here we've got an image of a man against a predominantly single coloured green background so this should be fairly easy to make a selection. What I want to achieve here is I want to select just him and the route that I'm going to take is I'm going to select the background because it's predominantly the same colour and then inverse that selection to just make a selection of him. I've got my magic wand tool here and there's a couple of little settings that we need to look at across the top. First of all the tolerance value. Now how the magic wand tool works is that if I just click with the magic wand tool I've got a tolerance of 30. As you'll see that it makes so much of a selection around him. It doesn't complete all the way around there and doesn't get the similar greens in both there and there as well. How the tool actually works is that when you click on an area with the magic wand tool is it selects nine pixels and evaluates their color values. And what it does is it looks at the color and then it looks at the difference in tonal shade between the color. Any color in Photoshop can be reproduced with 256 shades ranging from light through to dark. So a tolerance value of 30 will select shades of similar greens, 30 pixels darker and then 30 pixels lighter. If I did Apple D or Control D on Windows to cancel that selection, watch the difference. If I make the tolerance value 5 now and click in roughly the same area, is I get very little selected. Cancelling that selection and then making my tolerance value considerably higher, let's say 70, and then clicking again, is you'll see that I get much more of the image selected. But unfortunately now it's started to eat into an area of his head. So I don't want that to come up in the selection. So again, I'm going to cancel that selection. The default value is 32 pixels, which you've probably already spotted, but my preference is usually to go to smaller values. So I'm going to try a value of 25 here. And first of all, I'm going to then click and it makes so much of a selection for me. I'm a great fan of holding down the shift key and you'll notice that you get a little plus symbol next to the magic wand tool, which means you're adding to a selection. So if I then click to add, is that I can then keep clicking and keep adding and still holding down the shift key, click and get that area, and then click and get that area. Finally, I just need to inverse this selection from the select menu, so I've now got just him selected. I'm going to cancel that selection. Now keeping the same tolerance value, anti-aliasing, generally you want to have this switched on, and as the little tool tip is showing us there, this smooths the edges of transition, so generally it helps to make better selections around areas where colours fluctuate from one to another. The contiguous option, now I tend to switch this on or off depending upon what I'm trying to select in an image. If I switch the feature off and then do the same again, is you'll notice that it's looked globally across the image. So it's selected a little part of his eyebrows, it's selected some green in here, as well as some of the green in his tattoo. So contiguous means that it will look across the entire image to make a selection. If I cancel that and switch the contiguous feature back on again and do the same thing, we get a very different selection. This means that it will only select adjacent pixels, so it can't get through the different colour of his skin to get to his tattoo. So depending upon what you want it to do, but more often than not, you probably want to have the contiguous option ticked. So again, I can just go around with a shift key and there it is, a very quick little selection. Inverse that and then I have him beautifully selected. I'm going to change to a different image now, an image of a biker here, and double clicking the hand will just zoom that full size to my window. Here what I want to do is I want to make a selection of just the biker and him himself, his helmet and his leathers. I'm going to start with my magic wand tool because there's an area of similar colour in this sort of out of focus background. So I'm going to take my magic wand tool, I've got a good tolerance to go for and contiguous selected and click and make that initial selection. And then holding down the shift key is so I can also select in here as well and just click into there and I want to get this little bit in the middle as well where it's going through the centre of his arm. But you can see it's accidentally run off into here. I could choose to do an Apple Z or a Control Z to undo that last selection and then just take that tolerance down even further and then just try shift clicking in there and you can see how it hasn't selected quite so much. That's going to do for now. I'm going to take my tolerance back up to 25 again and then back onto the shift key and then click to add these little areas as well. 
Now, down here, the problem is, is that the dark areas down here are going to be very similar tonally to the dark areas of the tyre. So you can see that when I click down here, is it then does that because the tones are too similar, so it's getting confused. So I'm going to do an undo, an Apple Z or Control Z on Windows, and I'm going to stick with my selection there. And this is where we're going to introduce the use of the Quick Mask to be able to enhance this selection. The Quick Mask facility, which has been in Photoshop pretty much from day one, serves only one purpose, and that purpose is to enhance the quality of your selections. So if I click to go into the Quick Mask mode, you'll see that it then gives me a red overlay. And the red overlay is Photoshop's way of showing you the areas that you have or haven't got selected. So the red areas are the selected areas. If I click to come out of that and go back into it again, those are the selected areas. I'm going to hold down Apple and Spacebar, or Control and Spacebar on Windows, and then just drag to zoom over that area, so I can now see it in more detail. Here I'm going to take myself a brush, and I'm going to choose a hard-edged brush. If you paint with a soft-edged brush, then you'll get a soft-edged finish to your selection, but I want to have a nice crisp selection. So I've gone for a brush of a certain size here with a hard edge, and I'm checking that I've got black selected, because bizarrely in the quick mask mode, black paints on the red, which changes your selection. Something you just have to get used to. I'm going to make sure my flow rate is set to 100%, because I want to flow in full solid paint. And then you'll see that I can now click and I can start to paint in more of this selection here. Now I've gone slightly over the fairing here on the top of the motorbike, so if I now switch to white, white will allow me just to paint that little area off, just paint out that mistake there. I'm going to switch back to black, so I just need to fill in this little area, and using the two keys to the right of the P key, is these allow me to take the brush size down, a good little keyboard shortcut, so I can then just brush into that area there. And it's a way of being able to hand paint a selection. So if I now come out of the quick mask mode, you can see I've just missed a couple of little bits and pieces, go back into the quick mask mode and just paint over those to fill those in, something like that. Now holding down the space bar is I can carry on moving around the image and I can see around his gloves here and this area that it's not quite perfect. So back into the quick mask mode and then still with black, take my brush size up a little bit. I can just paint in those areas, take my brush size down, just get neatly in there great for making complex selections of complex areas. Now if I move down to the bottom of the bike here, I can then choose to hand paint all of this selection in. So I'm just going to go around some parts of it here and start to paint in this selection. If you have a light pen, this is an awful lot easier than it is using a mouse. So I can then take my brush sizer. It reminds me a little bit sometimes of cutting around the edge of a room when you're painting a bedroom or a lounge or something. You'll use a finer brush to go around the edges. So I can then take my brush size down and then start to work in more detail neatly around the edge of the bike here. If I double click the hand, I can then recenter the image. You can see I've only done a little bit here, but if I now come out of the quick mask mode, as you can see how I've then painted in the selection on that area. A few little bits at the back, I could carry on and do the rest, I'm not going to because it's going to take a bit of time. But if I then drag with the zoom tool, I can zoom into this area, back into the quick mask mode, and again with a brush with black selected, I can then paint in that selection better here. So if I hold down the Alt key and I click the quick mask symbol, is it shows me the mask that way round. Keeping the Alt key down and clicking again takes me back to the normal mode, and then clicking again has reversed my mask. So my mask is now working the other way around, and this allows you to then see the quality of your edges better. So I can then see that I've missed just a little touch of that edge there, and I could paint that in, and there we are. We're beginning to get the basis of a very good selection. To recap, that's using the magic wand tool, and then to use the quick mask to be able to enhance the quality of your selection.